So I want to fix up a little bit of uh, this cable mess and make it look a little bit more professional. Um, so I'm going to lower my bus bars down which will free up all of this space here. And so here I'm going to put a breaker box um, in which I can hide the two bus bars and all of this stuff going on. And then I have to add another uh, shutoff switch for the pip. And I have to fuse the pip as well and just get rid of this little breaker box which I'm going to put a breaker box here to cover as well my terminals that come in from my solar and then put these in there and then probably incorporate this breaker box that I have up here um, into the center panel here which will free up this wall for other stuff and then maybe run some guttering along just to hide the cables I'll see about the guttering it might not be necessary um, just to clean this up and make it look a little bit more professional and I think it'll be a little bit safer just with all the cables uh, all the cables covered not that anything really is going to happen to the cables anyway it'll just make it look all a little bit more professional so let's get to it this break box is going to go down there So this is as far as I've got for today. I've got the box on the wall. I've got the breakers in. The breaker on the left is for my Tesla solar tracker, 80 amp, and the breaker on the right is a 60 amp breaker for the PIP. I have, um, so these are just two posts. Make it easy to connect from the solar array. And yeah, that's it really. I have cables coming in here for the pip and then I have the green cables coming out here to the solar tracker 5 and yeah these um, these breakers are bigger than normal breakers which means that I've had to modify the cover see I've had to chop out uh, a piece for the cover for this, but uh, that will go on here. Let's see, they don't, they don't quite fit. So that will go on there like that, and everything is nicely hidden away. Now to breach. some work going on in here <coughs> anyway so I wanted to make all of this look a bit neater so I'm installing some of these gutters and in this big mess of cables I'm going to uh, put another combiner box like this one but bigger <coughs> just to hide all the cables and make this look a little bit neater here's the combiner box on the wall now I just have to figure out how to fit everything in there. So I'm about halfway through. I've got both the bus bars on, negative, positive. That is the shunt for the BMV702. And I have so my inverter, uh, my Studer inverter, all packed up positive through there, negative coming down the center, and I have the pip uh, all wired up, negative coming down through there, and positive through there. So now I have to readjust, or remake all of the battery cables from here, um, from here to the bus bar. I'll make all of those shorter, and uh, yeah, I've made enough cables in this project to wire a battery bank for an army. So all the 
All the batteries are now hooked up to the bus bars and everything is nicely hidden away in there. Although this has made another mess of my battery cables. Um, I made one mistake as I normally do. I To make all the cables the same length so they all have the same resistance I took this one which I thought was the furthest cable away and I cut them all to that length. <laughs> then when I got to this one as you can see that is the one I cut the lengths for. When I got to this one obviously the cable did not uh, reach the bus bar so that cable is longer. But anyway I've still got some more work to do on these batteries. I'm going to switch every one around, every second one around. I'll probably start with this one and then that one so that that is there and that stays in the same place. Um, and then I can change this longer cable to uh, one that is the same length as all the others. Um, and then that should also clear up a little bit the mess of cables. It's a bit messier now but I don't know how to make this any any neater. If you want to keep the cables all the same length then uh, then there's always an excess of cables with the, the batteries that are closer to the bus bar. Take two. <laughs> Here it is again. Now it's improperly. I don't know if you noticed but the uh, I got dirty hands from uh, these stupid gloves make my hands go black. You're supposed to keep your hands clean. Anyway, I'd made a mistake and uh, I'd put the shunt on the positive side instead of on the negative side. And I'm using this uh, 300 amp automotive fuse as a little bridge there so that I don't have so many of these. Um, I have uh, these two battery posts there because um, just to kind of make this even because uh, on this side on the shunt the it's not very good as a battery post if you've got several different things that need to go onto it the, the screw isn't very long so I had a post there and also just to kind of even it out I thought I'd put another post there and then the um, the bus bars are just free um, but that looks a lot better as you can see by this pile of uh, <laughs> cut off cables. I've had to make a bunch of cables uh, in this project um, and uh, make and remake just because you know I kind of do things as I go along. You can see all of these cables cut and uh, a tool that I have found invaluable for this are these PVC pipe cutters. Um, these are awesome both for stripping and for cutting the cable. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Oh, sorry, filming my crotch. You probably don't want to see that. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Let's get it to bite. There we go. So. These are a bit broken because they're not supposed to be for this. So there you go, you can see they cut this perfectly and then you can also use them to strip the cable. Well once you get the hang of it, um, you just choose the amount that you want. Uh, maybe a bit more than that. Just have it bite in twist it and then you'll get you'll get the hang of it but uh, at the beginning you peel off some hairs but once you've once you've got the hang you see it peels it perfectly you see I haven't uh, I haven't touched a single hair it's ended up taking me most of the day, but here is the uh, system all cleaned up. So you can see I've got guttering in almost everywhere now to hide most of the cables. I've got a, there's always stuff left to do, so I've got to pass a piece of guttering along the bottom there. Still just to hide those cables. These I'm just going to leave like this, there's no point in, in covering those. And then I have to fill up all these spare holes with silicon um, so that the um, so the battery box vents properly out through this vent here. 
but uh, I've got the pip is all hooked up now to the mains as well so I've got a AC breaker for the pip there um, I think what I'm going to end up doing is get a double box of these and put it here or maybe on top of this one um, and then I have the pip and the Studer um, inverter so that both of the uh, breakers are in the same box um, that's off at the moment I've got the pip charging so basically I'm all I'm all backed up now and all, all the cables are hidden so that looks a lot better but um, so what happens is if the Studer ever packs in and decides to turn off and stop working I can just come in here and fire up the pip and you can see now the pips taken over the, the loads. Um, at the moment, I've got the pip charging, but if the say I had say I had the say I had the solar tracker working, and that decides it's not. It's going to not going to work anymore. I can just come in here and turn on the pip, and so I'm all backed up basically. Um, I've got a backup for my inverter, and I have a backup for my charger. So yeah, and all the cables are nicely hidden away now. Um, one thing I don't know is. So I currently have both of these uh, connected to the same thing. I don't know if I turn both of those on, if that's going to cause a problem or not. So for the meantime, I just um, turn one on and the other one off. I don't think so, but I'm not entirely sure, so better safe than sorry. Um, also, what I'm thinking, and I don't know, is so the PIP can work as a backup. So anybody that knows the PIP out there, could I pass the uh, power from this inverter into the PIP through the AC in and then have that feed the loads but tell it that this inverter is actually the mains um, is the mains power would that work uh, because obviously they're both drawing from the same battery bank so I don't know if that's a good idea or not but basically um, the pip wouldn't be pulling any power unless that thing decided to die or turn off um, but yeah I don't know about that so somebody out there that knows about the pip can tell me if that would work or not but at the moment you can see the pip is just keeping the batteries on float and the watt, the watt meter is rubbish. The load meter on the pip is terrible. It doesn't work properly. Look, there's no loads at all. You can see that's off. And it's, tell it, it's jumping all over the place. And um, also when the pip is on, it uh, so when the pip is acting as the inverter as well, it also jumps all over the place. So I have three different power meters telling me three different things at the moment. Anyway, this video is probably going to be longer than uh, I wanted it to be. But uh, so there's my system. Looks all nice and neat. Now, there's still a few things to do, as there always are. But uh, I'm happy with that. That looks great.